able to look at a few of them, put it in the question area down at the bottom of that screen. Okay, let's get going. Thank you very much. Here we go. Let's start. So first thing is, I notice that currently uh, Jason Brubaker is also on the phone. Jason, how are you? I'm well. Thanks, Good. Fred. Good. And Bill Deweese. And we have a couple pe more people arriving here as we start. Um, and... And quite uh, shortly, Mr. William O'Hanlon has joined us. Yes, he has joined. The, he is in the building. He's in the building. So first thing I wanted to do is, um, uh, Bill Deweese, if you could, and again, Bill's site is, uh, uh, let me just put it up here because I'm always confusing it now. It's voice-over-training.org. Uh, Bill and I just did some recording uh, about an hour ago, and Bill, maybe if you could, you could tell people uh, some of the things, not that we recorded necessarily, but some of the things that we talked about that might be helpful for other other protégés and other people listening. Yeah, well, we spent time today really covering some of the uh, the, the basics and a voiceover 101. What are some of the things you need to know? We basically we did essentially three short modules. One. We talked uh, about the performance skills that would be needed and worked on to develop. Uh, we also talked about uh, what would be needed in terms of just running you know, any kind of a home office and studio, some of the real, real basic stuff. And then we also just talked about the, uh, the uh, landscape of voiceover and how it's different now than it used to be 10, 15, 20 years ago, what you need to know to be successful today. I'm more concerned about the insights that you, that some of the things we talked about as it relates to products and information products in general. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. I, I, see, I see where you're going with that. Well, the, yeah, the thing today, and really that Fred taught me today, was that much of what I do is usable content. And I really hadn't been thinking about that before. And the, uh, the encouragement was to begin to document and video and audio uh, as much as I can of what I do. Uh, and, the, and much of that we will actually turn into content because things I take for granted, things that you take for granted, you know, in, in your day-to-day -day work are things that people who are interested in our line of work would find to be very, very valuable content. So going forward, I'm going to begin recording a lot of what I do on a daily basis. Yeah, you're, you're uh, coming through a little. It's tough, tough to hear you. So basically, one of the things we talked about was the idea that Everything is content for those who don't have a lot of knowledge in a particular field. So one of the things that I encourage Bill to do is one of the things he tells people in the voiceover business to do is as they are going down the road in their car, for example, <clears throat> to start reading out the various signs that they see along the highway, the billboards and things, and to, to be sort of practicing their verbal articulation skills as they do that. And I told him that he should probably, you know, next time he, he says whenever he does that, his wife gets a kick out of it. And I said, well, you know, maybe maybe turn her loose with the flip video and have her record some of those sessions of you in the car actually reading things out along the highway. Now, again, that seems sort of, you know, inane, but in actuality, people, if you've talked about it in one of your, you know, one of your free items, uh, it, it might be extremely valuable, worth doing. So... Again, what we think of, if, if, you're, if you're really knowledgeable in a field, what you think of as, as sort of worthless, other people are going to say, wow, that was really good. I really like that. And I mean, I've seen that all over the place in a lot of different areas. Uh, and we now have every panelist on. So we've got, let me just proceed to, uh, to talk to Avish. Avish, you and I had a session yesterday for about three hours recording uh, stuff for speaking expert. Let's put that up real quick and uh, tell people what you sort of learned there or what we learned, perhaps. Um, what did we learn? Uh, I don't know if we learned anything new. This is our third one doing this. So, uh, I mean, I know that this is our third time doing it. We learned that Skype and, uh, and GarageBand combined to be a perfectly suitable thing for uh, audio product recording. Now, as, as I recorded that, we were on Skype together, and I was recording it, um, doing my Skype, and then recording on GarageBand on my Mac. When I was done, I immediately then did an export the song to disk in GarageBand, which saved it as an MP3 file, or you can save it as an MP3 file, which I did. I then took all of those files, and I, I did a compression um, using you know the, the standard compression means, and uploaded those to my iDisk. And Avish, were you able to retrieve that already? 
Yeah, I downloaded them. I haven't gone through them yet, but I downloaded them today, so they're ready to be gone through. Got it. And so one of the things that we did was, you know, again, the whole process of how to do this now, and, and you guys have probably seen it, but uh, my interview with Tim Wu, who wrote uh, a, a very well-known book and corn, coined the term net, re, net neutrality, is on the site, and I did that with you know, I did that with a, uh, with a Skype connection and it, you know, it doesn't look perfect, but it actually works and looks fairly good. If I can find this, I can show you. I mean, it's not, and it, again, this isn't, you know, the thing I did with Fit and Surf, which is there is high quality video and, and really, uh, you know, super top notch stuff. But the stuff that I did with, uh, Tim, and let me just see if I can find him, Tim Wu, um, is is a little bit you know it's not nearly as good but it it certainly works um let's see here um i'm going to you know so i'm going to go to this site and just show you what i have here just to give you an idea of what it looks like for those of you who haven't seen it um and tim had i think just gotten out of bed so um but hey he's a, he's a college professor he's allowed so i mean this is what it looked like right Okay, welcome, folks. I'm Fred Gleek, and my guest is Tim Wu, and Tim is the author of The Master Switch, and rather than my trying... So, again, you know, I just wanted to give you that as an example. Here I am with Skype, and why did I do it with, with video rather than audio? Uh, just because he was willing to do it. Um, I don't really think that anything that we discussed had any kind of a tremendous visual component to it, but I just thought it was sort of a cool thing to do, and... If you've got a good connection, at least people can see the person. Occasionally, they make some gestures, etc. I mean, he gave me the one finger salute at one point, but uh, you know, the visuals are 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 important sometimes. Um, and I know that uh, also we've got uh, Burke Allen on the phone. I talked to him earlier this morning. Burke, how are you? Hello, Fred. And and what? Why don't you know? I'm trying to just sort of go around the horn here with all the various folks and ask them. And by the way, for those of you who don't know Burke, uh, for those of you who are new to this, it's uh, Burke Allen is we have our joint venture, which is publicityseminar.com. And uh, I'm going to pull that up as well. Burke, tell people from our brief discussion this morning, any ideas that would be applicable to the rest of the group? Well, what we really like, uh, I think, is is the model that you and Bill O'Hanlon put together um, in terms of, you know, monetizing our product and and using it as a, a lead generation funnel. Um, you know, my company is very service oriented, and my pricing tends to be a little higher. So, I think the goal with with this product that we put together is to give people an inexpensive introductory way uh, to get involved and be able to generate free publicity if they can't afford our retainers. To that sort of thing. Yeah, and I think it. I think I was illustrating this to uh, to someone. I think it was to Bill Deweese, where I said, if on the bottom of your sort of pyramid you had products in your niche, that would be sort of you know it'd be nice if you could get everybody just to do that rather than to have to do more. But in actuality, above that is group coaching again in your niche, and then above that, in terms of both pricing and you know, exclusivity is individual coaching in your niche again. So what you've got here is that Burke is is liking the group coaching model, which, um, Bill, why don't you talk a little bit about that and let's talk about sort of how we did that and what, what uh, how that's supposed to work exactly. Well, uh, you know, you said lessons learned. One of the lessons I've learned is, as the old song goes, it don't mean nothing until they sign it on the dotted line. There's a few people that we screened, we accepted, and uh, they didn't actually pay. <laughs> so it don't wow. mean nothing until they pay. Um, and so we're at uh, 15 for the first group, and you know, that was great. You know, we were happy. We all we were only going to do one group, and then we got overflow, so we did a second group, and we had 15 people approved, and now we have 12 people essentially for the second group. So. Um, you know, when it came time for them to slap down their money, a couple of people got cold feet, even though they said, I'm absolutely committed to, you know, getting my book published in 12 months. And one guy said he just got a publishing contract, and he just let us know today, which is the first call. We're going to do the first call in a couple of hours. And he said, oh, I got a publishing contract. I, I withdraw. So you know, it's like I've been bugging him to pay for the last couple of days, and he's been not responding to my emails. So... 
um, you know, that, that's a good learning. But, the, you know, again, the general model is we decide, we put up some uh, preliminary videos just saying, here's what we're up to. And if you're interested, click. And then here's the more, you know, detailed descriptions. So what you're looking at, um, you know, is the page where we had three videos. Uh, one just introduces the whole thing. And then there were two that were actually instructional videos that were a combination of keynote slides and an audio that Fred and I recorded um, put onto those keynote uh, slides with just a little, um, you know, PowerPoint basically bullet points. And um, then we said click to apply. And they had to apply. They couldn't get in without applying. And we turned away, I don't know how many, Fred, I can't remember, four or five people that either look like, you know, they, they, it was interesting because they wrote a minimal amount. Yes, I'm committed. Um, Want to write a book. <laughs> and the other people would write a paragraph for each thing, you know. And right. so that was a bit of a screening device. They didn't want to even put any effort into the application. That helped uh, to, to screen people. But the second thing was, some people we just looked at each other, Fred and I looked at each other uh, metaphorically across the email and said, what do you think? This person doesn't seem right. And he'd say, or I'd say, yeah, you're right. This person looks really weird. No thanks. And, you know, we just wanted to screen for obvious psychotics, basically, and disruptive uh, group members. And we did. And so we've got some pretty solid people. And we're starting today on our first calls. And we put up... Um, uh, we put up uh, our our products, but not all of our product. We promised like six thousand dollars worth of products. Because between us, we have a bunch of products, but we are only putting up like a thousand dollars worth of products right at first because we don't want to uh, have them get overwhelmed and get lost in the whole thing. We're really committed. To everybody getting their book published in twelve months. We ask them to commit to three months. It's two ninety seven uh, per. Um, yeah, if anybody wants to refer anybody, there's still three spots available. Um, we're asking uh, for three-month commitment because, you know, if they just do a month, they might be able to get their book going in three months, but one month, very unlikely. Most people won't do that. So we said, you've got to commit for three months. You don't have to pay ahead of time for three months because not everybody can afford that. You just have to commit to staying in it for three months. Now, again, we may get a little dropout about that. But most people said, sure, and some people paid for the three months. So we've got a few people that are already prepaid. So basically, we, you know, it's with two phone calls a month, all our products, and some emails back and forth. Um, that's the model. And we're going to have them support each other, which they've already started doing, give each other advice on titles and subtitles and and keep you know support to keep writing and uh, decisions to um, you know whether they're going to self-publish, e-publish, self-publish, or traditional print publish with a small publisher or one that needs an agent. We're going to really help them figure that out. Some people already have committed to one direction or another. Um, how do you get them to stick? Um, well, I'd say the one thing is that we've offered a bunch of products, but we're not releasing them all at once. That's one way we get them to stick. Second thing, you know, so they have to be in that three months. Remember, they've committed. And I said, by the end of the three months, you'll have all these products, but we're not going to release them all at once. Second thing is we're putting unannounced bonuses, and we're just, we'll do that right before we ask them to renew. Yeah, so interviews with big shots, agents, you know, successful writers, uh, publishers, um, some people in this group. You know, publicity people. Hey, Bill, talk, um, talk any, to, anything like that. Talk to us about the the value of yeah. the group interaction and why that's important. In other words, this isn't just us sort of talking at these people. What value do they get out of the group right. experience? Well, I you know, I think it's worthwhile if all it was was Fred and me instructing people and coaching people and all our products. That's well worth it. It's it's definitely you know worth nine or ten thousand dollars with that because our time is expensive and these products are really good but what we promised and what I've discovered in my other coaching groups is when you can create a community of support and encouragement and accountability it's something we can't offer Fred and I can't do that we can't create that community we can create leadership but we can't create community 
And once they're, that's another thing that gets them to stick because they're committed to the people in there. They start to make friends with the people in there. They start to, you know, get excited about the people in there. When somebody, you know, gets their book done, everybody's excited. When somebody falls off the wagon for a couple of weeks, they don't do anything. And then they come back. Everybody says, you know, get back on the horse. It's great. And so if you can't get that community going, I think they're a little less likely to stick. But, um, and I've had two groups that I did before Fred and I did this and we modeled on and one of them never co cohered. It just didn't get, didn't coalesce into a real community and another one has and those people have stuck for uh, 12 months or 14 months so far and they're paying $500 a month as a different program. So, you know, I think that what I've read about in continuity of membership programs is you can count on an average of three to four months stick. And um, I, we're going for 12 months if we can get it, if we can create a community. And you may have to switch a couple of people out because they drop out and you add a few more people in, but we're really trying to make that community. You know, one of the things that I, I since many of the people probably here aren't going to be on our call, although some of them might, I'm going to give one thing away. Um, you know, a lot of times people think that the only way to really be published is via a tra traditional publisher. And it, it has a lot of benefits, but there's also the, you know, there's also, so it's traditional versus self. And the one story I'm going to tell at the very beginning of this is my, uh, my story that uh, one time when I, I saw Mark Victor Hansen many years ago at a seminar, um, and I had been talking about self-publishing, and somebody came up to me right, at, right as I was finished, and he was about to go on the stage, you know, in about 10 minutes. Um, I, I, they said to me, well, you know, I'm really, you know, I'm not really sure whether I should go traditional versus self-publishing. I pointed at him and I said, go over to that guy and ask him how much more money he would have made had those books been self-published. The guy walked over there and Mark Victor Hansen gave me this really dirty look. Um, because again, you know, there's a whole thing. And so we weren't not going to talk about the, we're, we're more talking about how we're doing things, but I just thought it was sort of interesting that, you know, people don't really understand, you know, publishing well enough to know in their in their individual situation whether they should be going for traditional or whether or not they should yeah. be going for self-publishing and why. Um, I also notice, oh, Dave Hamilton is here. Dave, how are you? Hey, Fred. Hey, um, Dave. I would like you to talk to people about anything uh, that from a technical. And by, Dave, by the way, is the web marketing magician. That is web marketing magician. Dot com and this is Dave Hamilton. Anything that you've learned, you haven't been on the calls for a while here or not been able to talk as a panelist. Anything that you've learned from you know from a technical standpoint in the last few months that you think would be of value to the entire group? Well, I, I appreciate that. I uh, what I've been focusing on, and I'm really intrigued by everything uh, you guys are doing and that you and Bill are doing. I'm learning a lot, and kind of my thrust and what I'm focusing on with this is ways for people to easily and quickly put up websites without becoming super techie webmaster but websites not only that get information up but that are geared to convert and for a while you know it's just been nice to be for people to be able to slap up a quick website but I think what we're all learning is uh, while you can't judge a book by its cover, the cover does matter. And I've been building sites that have been thoroughly tested and everything from, you know, the the call to action buttons and the layouts and the, you know, video versus text and images and popovers and things like that. And I'm not quite ready to, to share, but again, the goal is to put up these sites very quickly, very easily. If somebody has the copy, has a YouTube video, has an autoresponder, a buy link, where you know in a half an hour you could pop one of these sites up and it looks great. So that's what we're working on. And I, I wonder, just from the people on this call, if something like that would be of interest in a similar type community or um, you know what what you guys are doing with the publishing. Obviously, it wouldn't be 12 months. There would be no need for that, but something where right that's what I was thinking when you were talking Dave I was thinking okay we made this promise get your book written and published within 12 months which is more realistic but I would say you know get 
get 500 people on your mailing list within three months. Uh, get you know sell your first five hundred dollars worth of products within one month or five three months or whatever. I'd make a promise that you know is like wow I would do that you know and you then you say all the stuff you just said. I've really gotten the formula and the system down for creating converting websites, not just websites, but a quick and dirty and wonderful you know thing that will either build your list quickly or do product sales quickly. So yeah. that's, you know, and I was like, yeah, okay. And I think what more compelling for me is like what I said to people in my first coaching group, the $500 a month one, I said, within three months, I want you to be making $500 a month to pay for this group. Obviously more if you can, but I want you to at least be making $500 a month. That's my goal. So, you know, and people can justify it to themselves and say, wow, yeah, I can invest in this thing. And within three months, I'll make my money back. Basically, and so if you think you can do that with people, that's a great promise, and I would think that'd be great. I, I think that Bill, I, I love that idea, and it's funny because I spend a lot of time doing this for clients. You know, the bread and butter for me is you know hiring a client and building their systems, and what just kills me is I track their stuff, and I'm like, doggone it, these people are making a lot of money, and I'm happy about that, but I think. I got to do this for myself, man, because yeah, you make more yeah. money on the residuals than just the service mm -hmm. oriented stuff. Let, let, can I yeah. ask a question for you and uh, you and Fred? And it's on the with your program. And forgive me if I if you already mentioned this, but uh, I know it's a call a week, and you're trying to get community. But how how do you no. tell them two calls a month? Two calls a month. It's so not it's them? not one call a week. Yep. Yeah. Okay. What about the follow up? If they have a question, if you know, how much do you you know, let them email you or call you at home or, you know, whatever. Oh, not there... call me at home. That, yeah. That's not for me. Maybe Fred do that, but they can't call me at all. Um, I, I really, I'm $500 an hour if you want to talk to me on the phone, and I prefer yeah. not to talk on the phone ever. Um, so um, I would say there's some email stuff, but again, we create either email lists that people can respond to one another. Sometimes I respond, sometimes Fred responds, sometimes the group responds, you know, group members respond. And we also have a meeting place on, on our site where they can go and post things and get some feedback or whatever. But we rely on the group a lot to do that. If it's a very specific question for Fred or for me, we'll respond or we'll say, save it till the next call and we'll handle it then. So I'm trying not to put in too much time. I'm figuring it's two hours of phone call and I'm figuring another two hours a month of maintenance as well. Awesome. awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the, look, look, go ahead. Go, go ahead, ahead, Dave. I was just going to say that I, I I think I'm a few weeks away, but I'm uh, I'm inspired by what's happening here, and I think everyone else probably is too. But my niche is, all right, I want I want people to be able to put up a website as quickly as they come up with ideas and websites yeah. that convert. Yeah. Absolutely. Right. And uh, by the way, and I want to so give, then you have. Let me, let oh, me, go let ahead. Me, let me give people. Go ahead, Fred. Uh, did you just finish up on that point, Bill? Sorry. Yeah, just you know, the, and then the way the group is helpful is somebody puts up a site. The rest of them, you know, you say, "Please go visit my website." You know, my page, my sales page, my conversion page, whatever it may be. You know, my opt-in page, and give me feedback on it. And because you've been teaching them in the group what works they'll be able to see something and the person who put it up is so close to it they can't see it very well and so the rest of them will do your work for you once you train them in the principles and you're going to give them products to say you know what are the elements of an effective sales page what are the elements of an effective opt-in page what are the elements of effective conversion you say oh, okay that button you know you should try a different button or whatever and then they'll coach the person for you once you train them into it and you'll have to spend a lot less time doing that kind of stuff yeah, awesome. Awesome. Yeah, Good and, stuff. And the other thing is that, again, remembering that you've got sort of the three levels of service you've got, or the three levels you, you, you're involved with, which is product only, product plus group coaching, and then individual coaching. So, sort of keep that in mind. Uh, it doesn't really matter whose service we're talking about. Now, real quickly, though, I wanted to give you an update. Um, one of the things that I learned when I went to the, uh, the GoDaddy, uh, the ultra cheap domains, um, I seminar that I went to where you know for web stuff the SEO guy there talked about somebody asked him he said well what if we wanted to get virtually instantaneous results is it possible to do that in your SEO efforts 
And so, so can you get you know quick SEO results was a question. And the answer that he gave uh, was yes. And he said, the best way I've found to do that is with press releases. And so then the group got to talking and PR Web came up. And so I made a call today to PR Web and I asked them, and by the way, don't get involved with them because I'm trying to get some kind of a, a package going uh, that, that I'll be able to get to everybody, both protégés and non-protégés, that'll, that'll sort of cut some of that pricing. But one of the things that, that I did, I, I talked to this gal on the phone, she emailed me subsequently, and the reason why the PR web and sending out press releases is so effective in getting SEO is, is really two things, you know, and those two things are, you know, and we went over those today. Number one is that the site itself, PR web, you know, has a high page rank. So that means when they put your when they put your press release up there with a link using your keywords in the anchor text, it's going to help you organically in the search engines. That's A. B is obviously what you what you put out the press release to begin with, hopefully, to do is to get people to actually get the media to actually pick up on the release and Put it somewhere, you know. So if if you put the release out there and it's on the site and lots of people, uh, you know, come to it and then then take, you know carry that and put it put put a link on their site, et cetera, et cetera. That gives you more Google juice. But also, let's say the Wall Street Journal finds it, somebody calls you, they interview you, and all of a sudden you're in the Wall Street Journal with some kind of a quote on on a given topic. Now, the thing is, Fred? yeah. This is Jason Brubaker. I, I have a little bit of experience in this regard, and I think press releases have been a really great tool in terms of the ROI uh, that they give off. Uh, and you may be getting to it, but a, but a third point is also the RSS feeds and the Internet footprint that grows over time. And okay. the investment is just out there. J Jason, let, let's, let's talk more. Let, since you've had experience with this, be more specific. Tell us what happened over what period of time, how much you paid, and how much came back at you. Okay. Well, um, I, I have a product that I have that helps. My, my niche is independent filmmaking. And I have a product that helps filmmakers promote and sell their movies through video on demand outlets like Amazon, iTunes, and Netflix. And so I have a long form sales letter. And just, uh, just for a test, I, I decided to create a keyword rich press release um, in much a way, in ways akin to how you would create any sort of blog posting. You think about your headline, and, you, and I thought about it more from a web perspective and not necessarily traditional press. So my thought here was, let me create a press release, let me have some good keywords, let me have a good headline, and let me direct uh, the backlinks to my sales page. So I paid the fee with um, PR Web, which I, I recommend, um, and I, I didn't pay for the highest. There's there's three or four different package deals that you can buy with them, and I think I stayed in the middle somewhere. Whichever one promised to give me some good backlinks and uh, and uh, a web footprint kind of thing. I submitted that release um, for a minimal amount of dot money. I think I got some sort of discount coupon or something. I think I paid eighty bucks for it. And I was able to track within the first week three sales that came from that, that um, it, it paid for itself and then gave me a little bit of a profit margin on top of it. So the immediate, Jason, there was immediate payback in terms of dollars, but also now the Google juice that remains out there as a result of that press release is still valuable. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I can tell you from uh, promoting, I kind of learned it from promoting some of our independent films early on. I can still do Google searches using those old headlines and find that internet footprint that's still out there some years later um, because it's been picked up and index it's been picked up via RSS feeds and indexed on a gazillion different blogs and websites and all sorts of other folks like us that oftentimes search for content. Yes, some of it has been aggregated and manipulated and, and really chewed up. But what's funny is sometimes those backlinks remain. Now, they may end up on some junk sites out there. Um, and I don't know if there's any benefit to that or not, but from my perspective, it sure is neat to see, you know, whatever we put out there grow without too much of our intervention. Yeah, good, Jason. That's excellent. Now, maybe if we can get the PR maven on the call here, Burke Allen, to comment 
Hey, Burke, when, when, what has been your experience uh, with press releases? I mean, is Jason's example typical? Yeah, it is, and and I should tell you, Fred, that as as you have conversations with PR Web, we do several thousand dollars worth of business with their parent company, Vocus, every year. Yep. And my contract with them is up in March, so we're in the renegotiation phase right now. Perhaps you and I need to talk about uh, having them tack on a bunch of discounted PR Web releases to my renewal. And then we could divvy them up amongst the protege somehow. Yeah, I so like I that. So get them for pennies on the dollar. So basically, we're getting sort of a co-op price because we're all combining our efforts, right? Right, and I think I, I because I already do a lot of business with their parent company. Maybe we could get them for pennies on the dollar. Give me an know? example right you now. Guys, here's here's the quote that they gave me. I got the quote today. Of she said that normally, of course, it's normally the salesperson, two hundred dollars per per month. If I were to do a 12-month contract, uh, and then she cut it down to, uh, I was going to get it for 150 bucks per month to get one press release per month uh, at, out there using their sort of their standard whatever package. So, what is what rate? You know, what rate could we expect to get that would be more preferential than that? Well, I think we could get them down to less than 100 dollars a month if we tack it on to all this money that I'm already going to spend with them. Yeah. And so basically now we're going to have some group buying power. And when does that contract come up for renewal again? Middle of March. Now, is it possible that we could start using that ahead of time? In other words, do you have some credits left that could be distributed right now? Yeah, we could push it. You know, if, if we resign, we don't have to wait to resign until the end of March. We could go ahead and, and re-up with them if, and uh, kick the negotiations in. So the answer is yes. Got it. So now let's get a poll from the group here. Let me go around the top. Avish, what do you think of this idea? Uh, I'm sorry to hop off and cough a little bit. So we're talking about splitting a PR web membership for about $100 total? In other words, not $100 total, but $100 per release or less. Does And, and I don't know if you saw or, or if you missed the part about how effective this was from Jason Brubaker's perspective. But um, let me just skip you if you weren't on. Were you on listening to that? Yeah. Uh, I got. Uh, that's where I came in the middle of Jason talking about his. Uh, okay. Well, the from from, of it. from what you heard, does it sound like something that you'd be, you know, that makes sense to you to do as well? Just off the top of your head. Uh, off the top of my head, yeah, for some targeted releases. Yeah. Hey, Bill. What about you, Bill Deweese? Oh uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Bill O'Hanlon. Yep. And uh, what? And Jason, obviously, you you'd like that too. Now, Jason, you with the the figure that you quoted of eighty bucks. I wonder if that's for, you know, and Burke, do you know if that's for a different program, a lower end program, or what is that? You know, I don't know. I can just tell you that when I negotiated my deal with their parent company, Vocus, last year, I actually was able, to, and I hammered them really hard, but I was actually able to get 90 days worth of free press releases from them. Wow. <laughs> that's great. So, I mean, it's just, it's all negotiable, and, uh, you know, it, we were in a, a deeper recession economy last year, so, it, you know, they may not be as pliable, but... You know, I'll, I'll wrestle them to the ground and see what I can get. I, I can't even promise the $100 release, but that's what I would shoot for, and, and we may do better, may not be able to do as well. So now, you know, one, one of the thoughts I have, this is Jason again, one of the thoughts I have that would be beneficial, and I'd like to figure out a way to package it and sell it, is in ways to, can, uh, to how ultra-cheap domains is set up. Is there anything comparable in the press release world where we could white-label a product or a program yeah, that's that interesting. May not, we may want to put that on the you know on the shelf for another discussion, but yeah, that's what you should negotiate, Bert. Get a get a kind of an ultra cheap domains, um, you know, bulk rate, and then you resell it. I think that'd be great. I kind of did that last year with uh, those freebies, yeah. <laughs> and it worked yeah, out great. Cool. So cool. now, Burke, cool. let me Burke, let me ask you. You got ninety days of unlimited press releases. It was uh, one a day for ninety days, so ninety total. Wow, not bad. Um, yeah, I think that obviously for them, I mean, you know, talk about a pure profit model. It doesn't cost them more than a, a penny additional money to put out one of your press releases. So it's it's sort of wild. Although they do provide, what do they provide for that money? 
they um, there's an along with all the, the the targeting and the online stuff that that is sort of automated. They actually have warm bodies that will uh, that insist on going through the release to make sure that it is correct, it's formatted correctly, that the verbiage is right, that it's going to the right uh, people. So there's actually a phone conversation that will happen, uh, you know, to to review the release. And that's that's available with every release. That's right. Yeah, I mean, I don't think it takes a whole lot of uh, a whole lot of response to these things or move up in the rankings. And I was thinking, why don't you talk specifically? about how this would work for a new project being launched, like, say, voice-over-training.org with Bill DeWeese. Is this something that could immediately catapult him into the rankings? I'm going to have to defer to, to Hamilton or one of the other more web-savvy guys on the rankings piece because, Fred, we use them for public relations stuff. You know, we would submit to very specific target markets, you know, geographic markets, and and try to, to get press within you know the, the Seattle market on on websites and newspapers or, or that kind of thing and for that it was very successful and I will tell you that not every release gets picked up in a lot of places a lot of it still comes down to content but there were times when we had stuff picked up from PR web uh, through like yahoo.com's main page AOL.com's main page so you know it, it can work really really well um, you know what it, it's let me just Fred, if I can chime in just a little bit more, I, I could probably get you a screenshot just to show you uh, where the traffic came from that resulted in sales. I, I hit I hit a nerve a little bit different than what we're talking about, but again, I was not aiming for traditional press. I figured that was icing on the cake. Got it. Yeah. So in other words, your whole intent, Jason, was to get Google juice. Exactly. SEO was my was my objective, and and I think we I think on a small scale it was achieved. I'm going to release another one not in, in the near future, so maybe I'll document that for you and make a case study. Yeah, that would be great. And Burke, why don't you also tell people real quickly, thank you, Jason, that'd be great. Uh, Burke, why don't you tell people a little bit about the product that it's, that's about to come out? That, By the way, Bill DeWeese, you have the product that Burke put together. Have you gone through it at all? I have not yet. No, I look forward to that, but not yet. And Bill, I'm hey, sorry. Can I ask a question? Burke, tell tell people a little bit about the product that's now done and available. Uh, you know, you know, for some of the proteges, but I mean, the, the the product that's is now completed. What are its components? And I know we talked about this before, but the fact that it's also evolving. Well, we, we put together a product, and, and I think Hamilton had a question, so hang on just a second, Dave. But we we put together a, a product that tells you how to go after uh, free PR and free media exposure in all four modalities, in newspaper, radio, print, and online. Um, and along with that product, I think there were 80-some different audio tracks that were very specific. I also talked to, I think there were eight or nine uh, industry experts uh, you know, from the media about how they like to be pitched, what should be in a pitch, what to do, what not to do. And we'll continue to add on to those. For example, you know, if uh, I know Bill O'Hanlon did the Oprah show at one point, it would be great to have, you know, Bill talk to people in one of these about, you know, how that came about and what that could mean to, to your success. Um, and, and so we'll continue to add on to it as we go along and, and collect additional intel. I just uh, had a conversation with a reporter for Fox News who does all this stuff in Atlanta. You know, we'll add that one into the product as well. Now, you got to be careful, though, because Bill O'Hanlon is sort of shy, so he may be reluctant to do that interview. He is very shy and <laughs> retiring. I picked up on that. I already replied to your email, Turk, while we were on this call, because there, <laughs> there's spaces in between the interesting stuff. Um, well... <laughs> I'll say that's good, Fred. That's good. Um, well, I'll say again what I was saying to Dave for you, Burke. You know, to me, it seems like a coaching thing that would say establish yourself as an expert in three months or six months or whatever it may be, and you have that coaching component. You already have the product. Hey, Bay Bill, let me, have, let, me, let me interrupt yeah. you to just say, tell him what our conversation was this morning. Uh, yeah, and that's exactly, Bill, where we're going with it. I, I, I talked to Fred, and I said, you know, O'Hanlon and you have, I think, the perfect model for this because it's a, an opportunity for people who are self-starters and don't have as deep a pockets to actually hire a company yeah. to do it all yeah. to learn how to do it, but with the additional hand-holding of the phone calls. Hey, we, so Burke, we're essentially yeah, going to lift your thing and, and do it uh, with, for publicity. Absolutely. Hey, Burke, let so. me just – let's poll the audience here, which, which we don't have an official poll, but there are pe a lot of people on the call that aren't protégés. 
And I'd like to see everybody answer in the little question box that is on your site there. So if you could respond to this question, which is, hey, Bert, come up with a number and let's just see. Tell people what it is, just sort of off the cuff. Again, we're not going to hold you to this, but what would that program consist of? A do-it-yourself publicity training, group training course, maximum of, say, 15 people. So to do it yourself, so to do it yourself, publicity coaching group, let's call it. And see, so yeah, I'd make it, I'd make a better promise. You know, I don't want to know about publicity. I want to be known as an expert. I want to be a well known expert. So I'd say make a bold promise like that. Become a well known expert within three months or six months or whatever, whatever Burke thinks he can make happen. Right. Okay. So become a be an well, expert in your field. So yeah. well known become, expert. Become a well known expert in your, in your niche or your field. Absolutely. Okay, and so I don't want to go into a publicity group. I want to go into a get me something I want group. <laughs> yeah, no, I buy That's that. That's actually very well put. That makes sense. So Dan, okay, so let's put a number on that. So that number, that monthly fee would be what, Burke? Let's say, let's say it was a two hundred ninety-seven dollars. How many people right. who are listening to this webinar while on the webinar right now would be willing to get involved in a program in which you would learn how to do it yourself in terms of publicity, but the bigger thing is you would become a well-known expert in your niche. If you could send an answer in the questions file there, I'd be curious to see how many people would go for something like that. You don't have to commit to it. I'm just curious as to whether or not that offer is enticing to people who are listening to the call. And so if you would, put the, uh, put the results in there. Uh, I've got and, and let me just jump in for a second, Fred, while, while people are chiming in. Uh, Bill O'Hanlon, you might find this interesting and be able to share it with your group. We, you know, we work with some self-published authors as well as people with the big New York houses, and it doesn't make a whit of difference in terms of, of being exposed as an expert, whether you're yeah. self-published or not. This week, we've got one self-published author who's writing an article for CNN.com. We have another one that just got a full page in New York Magazine. They're both self-published. Yeah, I think that now with the rise of ebooks and self-publishing being more uh, respectable, it's a lot, a lot more, you know, credible to be self-published as long as you do a good job about it and as long as you have a good niche. But I think the problem, of course, always with self-publishing is there's nobody vetting people and they have wacky stuff that they put out there that nobody wants to read. It's like my life, you know, who cares? Yeah, that's exactly right. And we all, of that's course always decline we always decline those yeah. people, but if they come yeah. to us with with something credible and interesting and we can yeah. set them up as an expert, it works just fine. Hey, you just to Absolutely. let you guys know, we immediately got two responses, one from Karen, one from Danielle saying yes, I would be in uh, for this kind of a thing. So I think that there is traction to that, uh, and I like the idea, but I think that when you say to someone, you're gonna make a bold promise, become a well-known expert in your niche, again, Bill, you, I'm sure you'd agree that you'd have to detail what does that really mean, you know? Yeah, I think that's right. I also think don't stick with our pricing, you know, I, you know, or else don't stick with our numbers. I think Fred and I decided to go for 15, because we were, you know, we were, we were just not sure how many people we could coach to get there, and then we have two groups of 15. But if we can do it really well, we might up it to 20 or 30. And you know, so you just have to figure out how many people you can do without being overwhelmed. I think, and and still deliver that promise. Yeah, um, and I mean, so I, just I, one more thing that I forgot to mention when I was talking about ours, and this is relevant to to Dave and everything, is we decided to put our products up on a page on our site. And the way I did it is through Web Marketing Magic and just gave a discount code. So anybody can go to that page and buy all the products, and anybody in our group gets a coupon that they get all the products for free. Now, so repeat, that, re repeat that so everybody understands it, Bill. So the idea is... So you put up a page with all our publishing products, which are $6,000 worth of products between the two of us, and we also say to our people you can get these products and the prices are listed on them so the value is established you can get these products if you go into our web marketing magic you just press add to cart and go into our web marketing magic account and um, just put in this discount code um, so that's that's the way to go 
Yeah, so and then buy them if not it's in the program. It's an easy way to deliver the products because I don't want to put them on a page and have everybody be downloading them all the time. It's a massive storage problem and also somebody gives somebody else the address and they go in and download everything. I want to see also which of our people are consuming what. And so I can see when they go in and consume something or download something. And so it helps me track who's actually participating in the program and who's not. If we got lurkers, I'm going to kick their, Fred's going to kick their butt and I'm going to kick their butt. But it's an easy way to deliver it. So we use Web Marketing Magic with just a 100% discount coupon. That's it. Uh, Dave Hamilton, any comments on that? Uh, I, I think just, just a quick aside on that. I think that's a great idea. And it's a great tactic in another form. What he just said about coupon codes I've been banging this drum for a long time. People, everybody on their website has get this free report by opting in, and people are so numb to that, even though it still works. If you are in a seminar or in a, on a call or something, don't say, go to my website and download this for free, because if you give it away, it has no value. If you say, go on my site to my $100 product and use this coupon code to reduce the price to zero, people feel like they're they're getting something, they're not getting a freebie, which is... Great you know, value, that's right. It's great value. I think that's a great other, idea. Yeah. And the other benefit of that is when somebody opts in, you got to hope they go click the confirmation link in their email, but a purchase counts as a double yeah. opt-in, so there's no follow-up. Once they buy it, they're instantly added to your list, so it's a great lead capture system on top of delivering material like you said Bill. Let's clarify that. What well, what Dave is saying here is that when someone goes to purchase the product even if it's for free by making that purchase with a discount coupon on Web Marketing Magic that gives them the product at zero dollars it also is a double opt-in so that person is on your list without any concerns about spam. Yep. Good. Bill were you gonna say something to follow up? No, just again that, you know, I think it's really nice to see then, it, just like Dave said, you go to a seminar and you announce that and you say, okay, put in the code Fred Seminar and you get 100% off this particular product and then you see how many people go do it. I mean, you're really getting a sense of what did I say during that seminar that drove 80 people this time and only 10 people the previous time. You could do split testing in a weird, you know, in a, in a sort of non very scientific way, but you see who consumes what you say because that coupon, you can also, uh, on Web Marketing Magazine, see how many people redeem that coupon. You know, you can get reports on that stuff. Sounds good. And, yeah. and, and you know what? Go ahead, sorry. You know what else, Bill? If you say, like, and by the way, the coupon expires at midnight tonight, Yeah. people are running That's to their true. hotel room to... Scarcity, to, to scarcity. Like scarcity. I like it. No. Yep. So the coupon expiration, yeah. Uh, that's good. I, I like all of that. So one of the things that I wanted to quickly talk about to the group here, first off, if anybody is on this call who hasn't been on these at much at all, and please tell your friends as well, is you can go to fredgleek.com and then click on the webinars button. And I have the vast majority of these JV protege calls we've been doing, probably at least 20 of them are up there for you to go and check out uh, for no charge. So feel free and please do that. Um, I wanted to talk with everyone, and I think we've got a pretty good list, and let's just go around the horn now. I think that for the April 1 through 3 event, uh, I've got a couple things to tell you about, and these are sort of, I, I both want to sort of give you a heads up on, on who's going to be there, but we already have confirmed Bill DeWeese is definitely coming. Uh, Bill O'Hanlon was first. He was, he's in. Um, let's see, and I know that uh, we talked to Burke and he was looking at uh, the, the flight, so probably very, very probable that Burke will be there. Uh, and let's see here. I know that uh, Jason is coming, Jason Brubaker. Uh, I know that probably Peter Beckwith is going to come. Peter is a, probably my, my oldest JV partner. In 1998, we had a joint venture together with uh, video producers. Um, and let's see, who else? Avish is coming, I think, right, Avish? He's uh he's left us I think or he's he's muted. He's in and out. Yeah. Uh, he's got stuff going on. Okay, so um, again and and Dave, I don't know what your schedule. You may or may not be there, but there's going to be now. Here's what I'm here's what I'm going to do, and and I want everybody to to remember this because I'm going to you know I'll remind you of this. But 
everyone is going to, every single person, I'm going to assign you a topic to do 15 to 20 minutes max on, on a given topic with a handout. And here's what's going to happen. You're going to basically make a little mini presentation to the rest of the group. All of these, uh, the entire thing is going to be, most of it is going to be recorded. And all of you, so we're going to do a 15 to 20 minute max hand, with a handout to our group and, and on, on your topic. So say, for example, in Burke's case, Burke is going to do like getting publicity for your site or your, you know, for this concept. And, and he's going to do a, a short, very, very tight presentation with three main points kind of thing and give us a handout. Now, in addition to that, we record this. Uh, we record this event and all participants get, get the rights. Actually, I'll call it the master rights it's to resell this product slash program and keep all the cash themselves. So you guys, by coming here, you also are going to end up with the rights to a product that you can sell to your list and anybody else you want, make it a bonus, do anything you want out of it, and it's, it's yours to keep. So anybody who comes, uh, I want everyone who comes to have their knowledge and expertise highlighted for a 15 to 20 minute segment both for the people who are going to buy that product at some point in the future, but also for the group ourselves. For example, uh, Jason, it would seem obvious to me that Jason would probably be, you know, handed the topic of the SEO. Jason, wouldn't you think that that would, you know, could you give me 15 or 20 minutes with a one page handout on SEO for, for sites? Uh, I believe I could, Fred. Okay, there you go. And so Burke, each of us, I'm going to try and tap each of your best knowledge and expertise that would be valuable to the rest of the group and that's how we're going to do it. Does that does that make sense? Does everybody like that idea? Yeah. yeah. Good. And also, again, like I said, we're going to get this thing, you know, we're going to get this product created and and again, you can do anything you want with it. Um, you can sell it, you know, give it away, do whatever you want with it, but it'll be something that'll sort of, it's sort of in a way, Jason, if you think about it, it's sort of like your question that you asked on our forum about whether or not you have these compilation ebook things. This is going to be a compilation audio video product. All right, I'm sold. Okay, cool. Um, <laughs> any anybody else have any other comments? You know, I was just before I before I do that, let me just tell you this that uh, and by the way, that's the 1st through the 3rd of April. That's a closed event only for JV partners. So, uh, only. Now, one of the things I woke up this morning, I looked at my calendar and it's the first time in a long time I've had, I've had something from like eight in the morning until six at night. And I thought to myself, man, I thought, I, I, I thought to myself, yeah, wow, I got a, I got a pack day today. This is, this is, wow, this is going to be a lot of work. And then I, then I thought to myself, wait a second, I don't have to work a real job. And this only happens like once every few months. And so I'm thinking, I better not complain because it's it's great because it means there's a lot going on. So uh, I was just just a uh, an, an additional interest point to share there. Anybody have any other comments, questions, ideas? We're getting close to the top of the hour here. Hey, can yeah, I make I, a quick know, I, comment, Fred? Yeah, sure, Jason. Shoot. Um, I'm testing an iPhone application specific to, to niches within information marketing. Uh -huh. And I will be able to supply you with some more information in terms of how that's working. But so far, uh, the folks that have downloaded it onto their iPhone has been pretty substantial. Substantial in the sense about 200 people within the first day. Um, within that application is an opt-in form. And I'd like to tell you guys more about it at some point. But imagine having the ability to upload audio as well as um, text and video into the palm of somebody's hand. And I know a lot of thought's been given to it. I don't think we've explored it enough as information marketers. And since I'm subscribed to just about every info marketer in the industry, I haven't seen this used a lot uh, to communicate, you know, different kinds of info marketing pieces to, to our list. Now, do you want people uh, to go grab that right now? All right, well, mine's very specific to filmmaking. If, if you look up Jason Brubaker Filmmaker uh, through the iPhone store, you're going to, or, or, yeah, through through the Apple, what is it, the iPhone store? I, 
the uh, iStore. What do yeah, they call it's that? I, I, the iTunes. It's the iTunes Store, yeah. Yeah, so you, you can obviously download it for free. You're going to get all of my filmmaking information. But from an info marketing standpoint, there may be a couple pieces in that app that you like that could be that are applicable to your own business. Okay. Now the I'm... feedback so far has been looks like you found my podcast, but I, I do have an uh, I have that out there as well. But what about the app store? Let oh. me just see iPhone. And no, that's not it, huh? And where where's the app store? If, if you have a uh, The App Store is on your iTunes. Just go on your iTunes and and choose iTunes Store. <coughs> well, it's going to be a little embarrassing if my if my app doesn't show up here. I have found. Go into your app. iTunes, Fred. Launch iTunes. Yeah, I'm not sure what kind of <coughs> what's. I, I'm not really. What I'm going to do is. A, now, I can get you a link. Well, no. More importantly than that, Jason, is are you in a position uh, to to take control of the screen? Yeah, I can take control of the screen. Here, hold on. Let me just give you the control of the screen and let you see. Here, uh, let me just screen share. Hold on a second here. <clears throat> Change presenter to Jason. Okay. Okay, you got it. Coming your way. Okay. So you can see my stuff here. Hold on a second. I can't see it yet, but I'm sure I will. Okay, here it comes. Okay, hold on. Whoop. Oh, let me reduce this down because I got, uh, okay. Okay, shoot. Tell us. Okay, so I'll just take us over to the link. Are, are we, uh, everybody can view my screen? Yep. Yep, I can see it. Okay, let me get here. You're looking at, at my uh, the beta stage of my marketplace right now. Cool. Okay, so here's the app for the official Jason Brubaker's filmmaking stuff. And what it is really is, is an ability for me to share information as it becomes available. Um, some of the top interviews I have, Charlie Day interview, filmmaking checklist, how to sell your moving 25 parts. Some of my top content that I can dump in here. I can also communicate with anybody who's downloaded this app in sort of like a secret society of people who downloaded the app. And unlike email marketing where you don't know if the email is going to be read or deleted or end up in a spam folder, this is like directly from my desktop to everybody's hand, if that makes sense. Sure. So it's some powerful stuff. I, I still need to test it. I have no idea if this thing is going to prove to be valuable. But for the enthusiasts that have already been following me that have downloaded it, the feedback has been great. And it's just one more little touch point for me to become more ingrained as as the expert in these people's you know uh, particular situation speaking of which who jason, made it for you jason who made it for you and how to get it made okay i have a relationship with this company if you see this this novatrix and he told me yep. not to start promoting it until next week so I've, i guess i've just jumped the gun a little bit um i will come back with some more information i'm setting up some sort of agreement with him to where i can hopefully offer uh, uh fred gleek's uh, proteges and listeners and list uh, a discount. And also, Jason, right. I think I have, I'm yet to receive an email from you regarding the other issue we talked about earlier. Have you gotten that to me? Did I miss it? Uh, you mean regarding Stanley? No. Yeah. Well, no, not that, but just other, I think some kind of our agreement of some sort that you Okay. I haven't about. sketched it out yet, okay. but it's coming. Good, good, good. Just checking. But I think this is a great idea. What does everybody else think of this? I think it's terrific. I was just, I don't know if you know Trey Smith, who's, I shouldn't mention the name, Frank Kern's cousin, and he just released an, an iPhone game, and he's selling a product where he's, he's saying exactly the same thing Jason just said. Look it, you can in-app communicate with all your people. It, a message pops up. You don't have to worry about email deliverability when you have an iPhone app, and he sold you know, a fair amount of his little game that he got created from somebody who cost him, I think, $1,400 to get it made, and he's already made back $1,200 or something like that in the first 18 days. So, I, I, you know, I've been looking at 
iPhone apps to, as a way to communicate with folks. And I think Jason's right on. You you don't have to worry about all that. They're, they've already expressed an interest. It's like a triple opt-in or a quadruple opt-in there, <laughs> and they see your message no matter what because it pops wait, wait. up when they, I, when they I, load the game. I got to be Mr. Stupid here. I want to understand this. So once I have downloaded your app, be it free or paid, you can now, Jason, you can now communicate with all those people directly onto their phones. Yeah, let me let me see something here. Um, how, how are we doing for time? Is this sort of no, go ahead, everybody? go ahead, go ahead, no problem. Okay, let me uh, because Bill, I'm you, and I you guys can't see my hour. password. I'm gonna log into my account here and just give you guys an overview of what this looks we like. We have an, we have another hour, Fred, yeah, before we right. up to Dorothy. Okay, so this is my interface where I log in. Yep. Mm -hmm. And it's a fairly, now this has all been set up for me, so it's relatively standard stuff here. For those of you who want to create games and do some really zany stuff, this is probably not the right program for you guys. But in terms of those of us that are happy just having the ability to create some stuff about us and drop it in here, you can see that with the ease of updating a blog, I can go in here and refine my my bio I can drop photos in here I can up upload some audio and this is where it gets really interesting if I want to add audio just like a podcast I can take my mp3 and put it right in here so Jason's mp3 as soon as as soon as I hit submit it's going to open it up and it's going to allow me to grab that file once that file is uploaded it's live and in fact I just did this one today so if you had my app, within five minutes of me uploading it into this interface, it appears in everybody's in the palm of everybody's hand, and they're able to click on that and listen to me talking to them. Now, what so about I can, what about if ahead. you wanted? What about Jason? If you wanted to send a message to everyone who had the app, how does that show up? Here it is. I go ahead and go in here, and uh, again, just like with the ease of updating a blog. I just go in here, add a post, and say, thank you, thanks so much for reading this. Obviously, I'm not going to hit submit, and right. then I type all my stuff in here. I, I hit submit right here. Right. That would then appear as an update in the palm of everybody's hand. An update meaning what? In other words, I have a little icon. My app store shows me that that, that, that particular program needs updating. Well, I, I have I was hoping for that, but I think I jumped the gun a little bit. I'm sitting here when I update these things. I have my iPhone in my hand, yeah, and I didn't wait to see if any little red dot showed up. So, but I'm just, that, I'm just wondering but, if we could, you know, I'm just wondering how we could show up as a voicemail message on their phone so that they'd have to check it. In other words, is there a way for us to get a little bit even more intrusive? Um. <laughs> I don't. I don't know, Fred. I, and and I, I. I see your line of of thinking there. I'd like to be. I guess a little bit intrusive. Um, <laughs> so I'll, I'll test it again to see if that little. I know what you're talking about with other apps. A red dot shows up. For example, I use Mint.com to manage my finances. When something changes, I get a little red dot, and I have to acknowledge that dot. Gotcha. I I'm don't just, know if this one gives me the dot or not. Yeah, I'm just wondering. If, if somebody's got, I mean, people have, some people have lots of apps on their phone. Some people have no apps. Some people have a few. But the people that have apps on their phone, how are they, they're no, how are they knowing that something new has been done by Jason Brubaker? I'll, I'll, te I'll test that again and let you know okay. if, if something pops up. Okay, cool. That's great. It sounds pretty exciting. What does everybody think, I think of that? When you, I think when you launch the app, it shows you that there's a little message that says something new. But it's different in every app. I have hundreds of apps and and it does tell you that it's time to update but I think once I once I launch my app it says there's something new and it needs to be updated or whatever. Yeah, the good. only last thing I'll say about this is if they come in through the app store if you see this down here with the mailing list yep. Yep. people have the ability within the app to give me their name and their email address. I'm not going to well, click on it because you'd be able to see everybody's name and email address and I gotta keep some privacy right but just know that I've had quite a few opt-ins through the iPhone application after somebody downloads it. Yeah, cool. so now... Which if I, I then put into my autoresponder. So now they're going to have to re-opt in through the autoresponder, but 100% uh, of them have been open to it and responsive. Here's my question, Jason. 
I say to you today, okay, I want to do the same thing for my stuff. How long does it take to get it done and who do I talk to? Um, I'll put you in touch with the people. Again, I can't officially start promoting this heavily, uh, but he is ready for me to help him promote it. And when it happens, you'll have the name and the email address of somebody that you can get in touch with. And I want to say that the turnaround time um, is fairly quick. The biggest weight is Apple. Apple still has to, Apple is still very discriminatory in terms of what gets in and what doesn't. Right. But utilizing, you know, this, these folks that have helped me with this at Novatrix, um, they already have pre-filled out forms where I just kind of fill in the blanks and help them help me help Apple understand exactly what it is I'm trying to do. Got it. Sounds so good. So it took me about a week and a half to get this live. Great. What does everybody think? Awesome. Great. Yeah, very cool. I'm hey. moving to app land, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Mm. thanks for that, Jason. Very good stuff. And hey, right, I'm going to give you the screen back. Okay, super. Um, and I'll just Okay, say I want to make a suggestion. I want to make a suggestion, Fred, that we're not protégés, that we're actually mastermind, your mastermind group. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> we want to be promoted from protégés to... Collaborators and masterminds. Oh yeah, well, uh, you, 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 we can have the official coronation ceremony in April first. 